Hello and welcome to a Talmud Israeli production. Today we'll review the highlights of this week's course of Daf Yomi study, Masech Bab Metzia, pages 39 through 45. 39, Lamed Shavosh and Ishba. So a person was taken captive. Vinyach Kama Liktsor. He left behind uh, grain in the field that needed to be harvested, was about to be harvested, or other types of fruit that was about to be harvested from the trees, picked from the trees. We don't want him to lose out on uh, the money he was going to make just because he happens to be held in captivity by some enemy. So Beit in Yordan Lenachasav, the court will go down into his property and Midna Petropis and arrange for an administrator who will kotzer, uh, harvest the produce. But after the harvest is over, then we'll have a relative take care of his properties in, in the next uh, agricultural cycle. But look him up at Triple Olam. Wait a second. Why not have the court established an administrator, a non-relative administrator, uh, not just at the harvest time, but going forward in the long term on behalf of this guy who's stuck in captivity? So the Gemara says, We don't make a long-term apotropos for someone who already has a beard. Meaning, for children, we'll make an apotropos because you'll be able to find someone. People think it's a, for an orphan, uh, for a child, it's a mitzvah to help them out. It's a gemilas chasadim, it's a kindness. But for an adult, you're not going to find somebody willing to take on the role of apotropos other than for the short term of the, of the time of the harvest, of the, of the katsira, so that after, after that, we're going to have to rely upon relatives of the shavui, of the, of the captive person. Men, 40. If you deposit some fruits with your fellow, when it's time to collect them, so you don't get back 100% because some of it's going to have rotted. Uh, naturally speaking, over time, you won't have 100% of what you deposited, but rather some percentage will have been lost. And so that's what the custodian will give back to you, roughly what would have been available to you. Now, wait a second. Why not just uh, give back what was, was handed over? Why is there any need for the chesronot? So, when is this said? Well, if, you, if the custodian mixed his own fruits with the fruits that were deposited with him, so now it's impossible to distinguish who, what belonged to, who belonged to what, what belonged to whom, so then you have to just guess what the chesronot were. However, if the fruits that were belonging to another person were given over to this custodian and were put in a corner where they're not intermingled with any other fruits belonging to any other person, then whatever you gave me, here, take it. Whatever is, whatever is there is yours. And if it's 100%, so be it. If it's 95% because there was some rotting, so be that too. But you'll take whatever was there. Mem Aleph. Tanya. What happens if a, a shepherd was shepherding his flock? And he abandoned the flock, Ubali, and went into the city to have a good time. Uba Ze'ev, and a wolf came along, the Taraf, and tore apart an animal. Ubari Vidara, or a lion came and tore, tore, tore apart an animal. Potter, the shepherd, is exempt. Now we're talking about why is he exempt? Because it's at a time when it's expected that uh, the shepherd goes into town. This is his off hour, and there was no expectation that anything bad was going to happen to the animals. However, if he were to leave his cloak or his uh, walking stick, his shepherding stick, on the animals, that's an indication that he's trying to steal them, to misappropriate these animals away from his customers. It's an example of shlichut yad. So the Gemara asks, But wait a second, the owner of these animals didn't lose anything by the shepherd putting his cloak on the animal. So the Gemara says, well, this within this viewpoint, shlichut yad does not require any chisaron, any kind of a thing lacking uh, from the owner. Membet, 42. Amar Rav Yitzchak. A person should always, when it comes to investing his assets, divide his assets into thirds. A third goes into real estate. A third goes into merchandise, selling goods in the open market. And a third should be kept in cash on hand for whatever expenses might come about that you can't anticipate. So a third real estate, a third in the, the, the marketplace, and a third cash on hand. Mem Gimel, 43. If you extend your hand against a, a, a deposited item, so now you're trying to steal it. This is an attempt to misappropriate for yourself. Beit Shammai says, we're going to uh, hold it against the custodian so that we'll calculate the value of this uh, item that's being taken based upon 
the more expensive hour, when it, whether it was more expensive when he tried to misappropriate, when he when the claim was made against him, when it was originally deposited, whatever works against the custodian, that's going to be what he has to pay. Basila says Keshas Hotza as the hour of the Hotza, which means the hour of the Shlichut Yad, the moment of misappropriation. Whatever the value of the item was then, that's what he's going to have to pay. Rabbi Kiva Rekeshas Hatviya, Rabbi Kiva says, no, no, he pays based upon the value at the hour when the claim is being made, when the, when the litigation is happening. Mem Dalit, 44. So this takes us to the beginning of the next parak. Hazahav Koneta Kesef, gold can uh, acquire the silver. Hakesef and Okones Hazav, however, the silver does not acquire the gold. Now, this requires a measure of background. The background is that when you buy, try to buy metaltalin, movable items, it only works if there is some kind of physical kinyan uh, that brings the item into the possession of the buyer. But cash payment alone doesn't actually work. It, it may uh, be legally relevant, but it doesn't seal the deal. So what the Gemara, what the mission here is saying is that kesef, Rashi explains Meshichat Hazahav, if you've Pull the, the gold coins towards you. You thereby acquire the silver for the owner of the gold. Meaning the, the guy is selling a gold coin. The gold coin is merchandise. The silver is payment, is cash. But flip it around and it doesn't work. That this, because the silver is always the payment and the gold is always the di- item of value, then if you try to pay with a gold coin, if you acquire, if you grab, do mashicha on the silver, that's not enough to acquire the gold coin for the other fellow. So, in, basically, we always have to think of it in terms of what is the payment, and what is the item of uh, uh, of value being bought. Gold coins are bought. Silver coins function as currency as payment. Memhe. Hayo omed begorin. If you were standing by the, the threshing floor, maybe other most, and he doesn't have coins in his hand. So the person is trying to deconsecrate Maser Shani, but to do it in a way where he doesn't have to pay the extra Chomish, the extra fifth. And the easiest way to do that is have your fellow do it for you, your friend. But he doesn't have cash on hand, so he says to his fellow, the fruits are yours as a gift. Knowing full well that his friend will give will give the gift back to him. And then the money, the, the gift goes, goes back, and the produce will be deconsecrated de- on coins which are in the guy's home. So this in this way, the Maser Shani is taken care of, it becomes chulin and can be eaten regularly, and the coins take on sacred status, are brought to Yerushalayim, but there was no need for the extra chomish. Everyone have a great week.